Duper Whisper for iPhone. It's like a multi-tool for your phone. I need a note. I need dinner. I need a message. I need to just record my thoughts. I need to figure out what I'm thinking. This app can do all of that and more. So today I am talking about Super Whisper for iPhone. It is unfortunately only available for iPhone or for Mac computers. I have done a more extensive video about Super Whisper for Mac. I've linked the video in the notes below if you want to learn a lot more about the settings and the modes and the models. I suggest you go check out that video. I'm going to try to keep today's video shorter, but no guarantees. Okay, so first of all, what is Super Whisper? Super Whisper is an app. You fire it up, you start speaking. It takes your dictation, runs it through an LLM, and turns it into text. Then, depending on the mode that you're running, it will run it through potentially another LLM and do something with that text. So let me give you an example. If I want to just capture a thought, I would hit record and say something like, uh, I need to remember to organize a meal plan for when company is coming next week. Um, let me think. I'll need uh, five dinners and three lunches. Um, and for breakfast, I'll just serve yogurt and granola bars. And then I hit the red button again. It processes that speech that I just said, cleans it up, adds punctuation, and it's now on my clipboard. So then I can go over like into my notes app and just hit paste and it will take what I just said and paste it into my notes app. But let's say that I want to save that in a sort of more condensed action plan list. I might want to put that in a bullet point task list format for myself. So I would change modes over to note and give that same prompt. Um, I need to remember to organize um, a meal plan for when company is coming next week. Uh, let's see, I think, I think I'll need five dinners and three lunches and um, for breakfast, I'll serve like yogurt and a yogurt and granola bar. And now you can see it will take my words, translate them to text, but then run that text through another LLM and itemize it, condense it, and summarize it for me into notes and actions that I need to take create a detailed meal plan, check ingredients, grocery list, notes for myself. The most common use that I have for Super Whisper on my phone, I don't do anything with it after I speak. I kind of use it as a notes app. I'll just kind of say something that I need to remember, cleans up the grammar, adds punctuation, and then it just keeps it in a file where I can go back and find it later. You can find this at superwhisper.com. You can, of course, find it on the App Store and download it from there. Let's take a look at pricing real quick. Their free model, free, did I mention free? Voice to text mode that works in any app. Meeting, recording, and transcription. Unlimited use of small voice models. Custom prompt control. Email support. All right, so it gives you a lot for free. If you want to upgrade, they've got annual and lifetime pricing as well. You can add everything that you get for free, plus you can use your own API keys. You get unlimited use of cloud and local AI models. It gives you a lot more models that you can choose from. I, th I think there's even a medical model if that's something that you need. Translate any language to English. Uh, it does have quite a few on the free model, but I think it expands it greatly with the paid. Transcribe audio and video files and priority support. So you pay once and that license is good for both your computer and your iPhone if you want to use it on both. I do use it on my computer and I find that my usage is very different between the two. So it's almost like having two super apps in one. All right, so let me stop here for a second. I know what a lot of you are asking is, uh, you know, my phone has dictation systems already. Why would I use this? If you have dictation systems you found on your iPhone and it works for you, that is great. They just don't work great for me. I might sometimes talk to ChatGPT directly through their dictation system because that seems to understand me pretty well. But the rest of Apple's systems, I have found really don't work for me well at all. I've tried to use it for messaging somebody from time to time, but it either just doesn't understand me or there's no sort of post-processing. It's just this rambling garbled mess that I don't really want to send. 
and I have tried to use voice memos before, but when I go back in, I have this list of just sort of dates and places that I left a voice memo to myself, and I have to go transcribe it or listen to it to figure out what I was even saying. To me, that's just not convenient. To me, this is the tool that kind of replaces several other disparate tools on my iPhone. Okay. So like I said, Super Whisper takes your voice, records it, transcribes it, but it has multiple modes. So let's go take a look at those. All right, so if we go in here to settings, you can see the different modes it has. It has quite a few built in, but it allows you to make custom ones as well. So let's take a look at the voice one. That's that's one of the ones that comes pre-filled in. So you take a look here at what the prompt is. This is what it's telling the LLM to do with the words that you've spoken. So you can see here, the prompt is, it will reformat the user message, fix grammar, spelling, punctuation, remove speech artifacts like um, uh, repetitions. It will clean it up, add punctuation, obviously correct spelling, standardize numbers and dates. It does not, importantly, answer any questions. So it's making sure that the LLM knows if a question is asked, don't respond with an answer because you know sometimes you're thinking aloud to yourself with questions and you're just trying to record the question. You don't actually want an answer to it. So it just returns cleaned up, correctly spelled, punctuated text. But if you wanted to use it to send a text message, the format that is output, you might want to be slightly different. So let's take a look at the difference between the two. So if I was in voice mode and I wanted to send a message to somebody, I might say something like, oh, um, I'm about to go to the um, post office and I can't remember, do we need stamps? Um, can you check on that for me? They're in, the, um, they're in the middle desk drawer. No, wait, I think they're in the top desk drawer. Could you go take a look real quick? Okay, so you can kind of hear me stuttering and stammering and repeating myself and backtracking. So in voice mode, it will take all that and here's what we get. Oh, can you go check on, do I need stamps? They're in the top desk drawer. This is actually basically what I would want for a text message. So to me, that's already kind of perfect. But just to show the difference, let's go take a look at message mode. All right, we're gonna say the same thing here. Um, I, um, I think I'm about to go to the post office and I can't remember, do we need stamps? Could you look and see if we need stamps? Um, could you just check for me real quick? They're in the um, middle desk drawer. Uh, no, they're in the top desk drawer, I think. Can you go check? And this is what it comes up with. And so there's an example of the post processing after you've said what you've said, what does it do with it next? All right, so by contrast, there's another mode that works similarly, but it is a little bit more formal and structured and actually keeps a little bit more of what you said, even sometimes if you've kind of corrected yourself or maybe repeated yourself. It's kind of a happy medium between just the long rambling literal text of what you said and that super short uh, message mode. And that is work. So here you can see the prompt for work. This again is a, a mode that they've given you by default. So it reformats the user message, structures it for a Slack style message communication includes a brief greeting and ensures clarity and conciseness. And so that was also, of course, clean up grammar, add punctuation. Um, this will fall, like I said, in between the two. So let's try that again, using that same message. Uh, hey, oh, I'm about to run out to the post office. Could you, um, would you mind checking real quick to see if we need stamps? They are in the uh, middle drawer. No, wait, I think they're in the top drawer. Can you check on that for me real quick, please? All right. So. You can see here, it's trying to preserve as much of what I was saying as possible without too much repetition and stammering, but it did have a little bit more of the information there. All right, and then the next mode that I find quite useful is the note-taking mode. So you can see the prompt here. It will reformat the user message, structure it for effective note-taking, ensure key points, items, ideas, action items, captures everything, really like you were trying to take a series of notes. All right, so this would be handy, like if you just came out of a meeting and you wanted to sort of capture what you heard as quickly as possible. If you were sitting down with somebody and you both wanted to take notes, you could agree to record this. All right, so let me give you a quick example of how that might work. 
Okay, so let's say I'm at like a back to school night. So I'm at back to school night. Um, the teacher is Miss Jones. She is teaching English and history this year. Um, it sounds like there's a list of about 10 books. I think um, I could get them from the library or maybe um, through Google Classroom too. Uh, let's see. Oh, she mentioned there's a voluntary $20 contribution for um, classroom supplies. I definitely want to contribute to that. And oh, she said, t um, she said parents are welcome in the classroom. If you want to sign up, there's a volunteer sign up form. I'm definitely interested in that. All right. So you can see this just comes back as sort of a quick itemized list of what I mentioned and action items things that I might need to remember to go back and do. So like I said, this is automatically copied to the clipboard. I could go into my notes app and just paste it over there if I knew where I wanted to save it so I could go back and look at it later. If I forgot to do that, I can always go into the file system. I can read what the post-processing output was. I can go back to the original just voice version so you can always get back to that original voice recording and I can always listen to the original audio file. All right, now we get into the fun stuff. You can customize your own modes. You can really be very creative with this and have it do almost anything you can imagine that an LLM would do. So if you're used to going to ChatGPT and giving it some data and saying, do something with this, you could put that right in the custom prompt. All right, so let me walk you through creating a custom mode. You can create, as far as I can tell, as many modes as you want. There may be a limit on the free plan, but I haven't run into it yet. All right, so let's make another custom mode. Let's make a compliment generator. The prompt I want to give is create a compliment that's unique and rhyming. All right, so the voice model, this is your spoken word. This is where it's processing the words that you say. Then down here at the language model, this is where it takes that text after it's generated text from what you have said, and then it runs it through another LLM to run that prompt that you gave it up above. This voice model is fine. I do need to turn on the language model for that secondary processing. And I think I'm gonna go with ChatGPT 4.0 because I like it. I want something creative to come out of this. Okay, so. I need to compliment a friend who's always helping me with hard things and has really good taste in books. And it comes up with, you're a beacon in life's maze with kindness that never sways and your book picks simply guiding me through literary haze. All right, that's pretty awesome. So I don't speak any foreign languages. I have had lessons in the past and so I know just enough to know understanding is one thing, speaking is another thing entirely, but then reading the foreign language or writing it is quite difficult. So I am imagining if I was trying to text or write in a foreign language and I was just unsure of it, I could set up a prompt to take in my spoken words. I could speak in my native language and have it translate and reformat it to whatever foreign language I wanted to do so that I could be a little bit more confident that what I thought I was writing was actually what I was saying. All right, so I set one up here. I created a mode called translate and I just said the prompt is translate to English. I did select the incoming language as automatic. You could set that to whatever your native tongue is. And then I went down and made sure I enabled the processing model. So let's give this one a shot. So since I don't speak a foreign language, I did ask Google Translate to give me a spoken message. I was just trying to say, hello, would nine o'clock tomorrow morning work for you? And so you'll be hearing the computer saying that hopefully in Spanish. Hola, ¿estás libre mañana a las nueve de la mañana? And what we get? Hi, how are you? Are you free tomorrow at nine in the morning? All right, so to me that looks like that worked. I think that was right. All right, so then I just got goofy and I made several other custom prompts just to kind of show you what could be done. I set one up to take in a couple of food. So the prompt I said was, I'll give you some foods. Please suggest a meal I could make out of them complete with a complimentary side dish. The side dish does not have to be made out of the ingredients given, but could be. Please include a recipe link for the main portion of the meal if possible. So this is the, uh, I'm brain dead. I just don't want to think about it. What could I make with this stuff? Chicken, ground beef, cabbage, and tomatoes. You can stuff cabbage rolls using the chicken and beef and tomatoes for sauce. A complimentary side dish would be a simple garlic bread, and it includes a link. 
and it tells you how to do the garlic bread. That's perfect. All right, next mode I made, healthier than fast food. Here's the prompt I gave it. I'm looking for quick meal options that are near me and healthier than fast food, but that I could still just grab and go. Give me some options of food that is similar to the vibe I enter. Okay, sure. This one's a little loosey goosey, but you know, sometimes you just need that outside brain giving you ideas. Let's give it a try. I just really want a burger and french fries. All right, healthier grab and go. Alternatives to a burger and fries. Grilled chicken sandwich with sweet potato wedges. Turkey burger, veggie burger, quinoa bowl, Mediterranean style pita. I want a big burrito. Chipotle's burrito bowl with brown rice freshly made veggie or local taqueria. Okay, so you can kind of see it's trying to work with me as much as is possible to give me slightly better ideas, lighter, a little bit healthier. All right, so you might have noticed I do keep getting this prompt popping up saying, hey, wouldn't you like to buy the paid version? I actually do have a paid version of this, but I did not add the license to my iPhone while filming because I just wanted to make sure that everything I was showing you was available on the free model. Everything you've seen here is available for free. If you wanted to upgrade, it does give you a few options. It gives you several other models that you can use for the post-processing and it gives you the ability to go into the audio files and rerun them using a different mode. So you could just say something once and you could reprocess it over and over. You could reprocess it into a note. You could reprocess it into a message. You could reprocess it into basically any custom mode that you created. And I, I do find that that's handy sometimes. Occasionally I will just be in the wrong mode when I say something and think, oh gosh, I meant to save that as a note and I didn't. So there's definitely some good options in the, the paid version as well. All right, so I think that wraps it up. You can see it's got a myriad of uses and a ton of different modes you can customize to however you need. So hopefully you saw something that might spark your imagination. Go download it, give it a try, and see what you can come up with. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.